episode number 235 with Daniel Garcia. Welcome to the Heads Up Poker Podcast. This is Steve Barton, and thank you for tuning in. This week, we have my buddy, Daniel Garcia. Danny and I met um, probably three years ago, and uh, we ended up uh, uh, just hitting it off right away. Real smart dude, entrepreneur, has his own business, uh, one of the most successful uh, window covering businesses in, uh, in Ventura. Um, and, uh, just, a just a super smart, uh, financial guy, hard worker. Um, he and I get along very well. And, uh, lately I've been getting a lot of questions about stocks and I thought, well, this is probably the perfect opportunity to bring in my buddy, Danny, the guy that I talk stocks with every single day. Um, so I brought him in, have been on a, a little hiatus. I got to apologize about that. Uh, the fires have been breaking off in California and all I haven't uh, gone out on any of the wildland fires I've been covering for the guys that have. And, um, and then on top of that, I had to move. Um, so that was, uh, fun. Uh, so I packed up all my shit in boxes and then moved it to a different location. And now I'm in my, uh, in my new place. But, um, um, anyhow, been super busy. Uh, and, uh, I want to thank everyone for reaching out and making sure I'm okay. Um, Mikey's doing uh, better. I talked to him the other day. Um, so I think he'll be on the, uh, on the next show and, um, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, Danny and I talk over, uh, a lot of different stocks and I'll tell you now, <clears throat> if you're listening to this in the car and you, uh, you know, you hear some stocks or something while we're talking about it, um, you know, make a note of the stocks and then go back and take a look at the graphs and you can just Google, uh, the ticker that we give you. So, for example, like British Petroleum, the ticker is BP, uh, Bravo Papa. Um, and um, like Edison is uh, EIX, uh, Echo India, X-Ray. Uh, you type those into Google, look over the life of the graph. And uh, basically what you're looking at is just the uh, stock prices. And then you'll be able to follow along and, and uh, keep up with uh, what we're talking about. So no poker discussion this uh, podcast. Danny doesn't play poker, but uh, plenty of uh, stock tips uh, for all you who have been asking and interested. So without further ado, Daniel Garcia. I got supersonic speed that I used to run to you. I stretch my arms for miles and miles and wrap them up. Daniel Garcia, thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, absolutely, Steve. Thanks for bribing me and having me on here. Yeah, it, it didn't take a whole heck of a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah you know, just a, to... uh, a little HJ from uh, uh, the local down on uh, the corner, and, and that was all it took. So, Well, and you forgot the free lap dance. Yeah, yeah, well, that too. That too. <laughs> You're never going to get that glitter out of your uh, shirt, by the way. It's just, yeah, that, well just... no, that, that's a rough one. That's yeah. Like, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, you're not going to lie. That stuff is insidious. <laughs> yes. so daniel you and i have known each other for um probably three years now we met through our mutual friend joe yeah and, yeah that's uh, right sitting up drunk one night i remember yeah yeah we stayed up until about uh, four in the morning just talking stocks and right. uh and that's when i was like with no chicks get... yeah yeah there was no girls there <laughs> yeah let's just want to make a point on that <laughs> yeah <laughs> we stayed up late drinking beer and uh, smoking whiskey. cigars and a uh, whiskey. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget the whiskey. Yeah. So you're uh, you're a bit of an entrepreneur. You've got uh, you've got your own business, um, right? And yeah. uh, uh, you're your own boss, and um, you're. Uh, well, yeah, I try you... not to work. I try not to work that much. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm really on the less is more program. Yes. <laughs> I like to say, can I get somebody else to do this for me? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, uh, I thought it would be cool to uh, bring you in because I've lately, I've been getting a lot of questions on uh, stocks, you know, cause I talk about it cool. on the show and yeah. uh, I thought, well, who better to bring in than the guy that I talk stocks with probably 20 Weekly. to 30 minutes every day. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's true. So, it's like a relationship. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Kinda little weird. romance we got going yeah. on here. <laughs> I don't kiss on the first date. Yeah. 
So, well, hey, I'm locked and loaded, Steve. Everything's good. I got my new pour over coffee here. I've kind of graduated from the uh, uh, coffee machine and uh, my um, French press. So, well, oh, okay. Go. Okay. Yeah. So, what's the so. pour over? Is that a French press or, or what is it? Well, no, no. Well, the French press is actually good, but I've, I found that the uh, pour over method is uh, it's good. It kind of poured over 202 degrees exactly, and the coffee just, it, it can make bad coffee taste good. Really? <laughs> so, yeah, you, you, so you, can, you can be so drinking uh, Folgers and it just tastes like. You know it. what? I even have Uban, and I'm like, you know what? I don't even mind it. Don't get me wrong. You know, good coffee is good coffee, but, um, but yeah, it's just, it's a. Uh, just the way that it just kind of, I guess, just pours over, you bloom the coffee, and you know, it's a time thing. So, like, I like to do it on the weekends now, but it's working so. Really so, well. what is a pour over? Is that the brand? So, or? you know, when you go to like Starbucks and they're all like hanging out there and they're like, if they don't have your coffee, or they're like, hey, well, we can give you a pour over, but it takes like 15 minutes, you know, for the guy, you know, it's like okay. it kind of like. So if you're in a rush, like, don't get a pour over, right? Okay. Um, so, yeah, they basically just take a glass you know, kind of a, you know, like cylinder or whatever. And then they just kind of like bloom the coffee and they kind of pour it over, let it set for a little bit. And then just so it kind of absorbs the water and then they wait a little bit and then you're supposed to kind of do it in a circular motion, but whatever. Um, and then just finish kind of pouring the coffee over into the glass. And then um, it just kind of just gets everything out of the coffee, you know, and uh, it just makes a really nice cup of coffee. I find it better than a French press, actually. I've kind of been working on both methods and uh, I'm getting ready to throw away my French press. So if you need one, you huh. can have it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, uh... French press is good. <laughs> Nothing against the French or the French press, but you know you've you know, influenced I, me quite a bit on on new habits and stuff. I've been putting the collagen yeah. in my coffee. And bad one, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. MCT oil. Yeah, yeah MCT all, oil. I put oh, that yeah. in there with the cinnamon yeah. and the uh, little oh bit, yeah, couple Get couple drops of vanilla. You know, mix just it, to... Mexican it up a little bit. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a fine art. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome, I do that man. one. I don't know the pour over though. That that you might not it's have. All, any yeah, it's it's honestly it's it's really you're really going to upgrade your your coffee experience. But again, you have to have kind of the time. But the nice thing about it though, it's actually easier to clean than a French press cuz you know, I I've got the composting thing from you. So like nice. I'm dumping out all that like, you know, it's just kind of a pain in the butt, you know, with a French press. So anyways, I'm all about the pour over now. So, you know, okay. the, the cure the I have, you know, for, you know, when I'm in a rush and uh, pour over is when I got time. So yeah. that's what it is. So. Okay. All right. I'll have to see that one in action. I can't. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, re it's you know, and it actually looks like a really nice, like, piece. You know, I put it up in, like, the cabinet and people are like, oh, what's that? You know, I'm like, well, let me introduce you to let my me, pour over. Yes. <laughs> let me show you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it comes in a really nice glass thing with this little you know, cork kind of, like, handle thing. So, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good experience. If you're uh, serious about your coffee, you got to get serious about it, you know? Okay. All right. All right. So, yeah, well, I uh, don't want to spend too much time on your pour overs here. So, yeah, please. <laughs> right on. Right on. Yeah. So, um, what um, your house up in Santa Barbara, that has been very mm -hmm. impressive to me. You've taken it from. Uh, oh. God. Just yeah. a. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't, I don't want to call it a. Uh, Tear down. Let's just yeah, let's yeah, proper yeah. about it. Torn it, down. Yeah. You, you just started from scratch. You moved a kitchen. Um, yes. Rerouted know. pipelines, gas, everything. Moved the kitchen to the other side of the house. Yeah. Yeah. So no, no small feet there. No, none at all. None at all. Yeah. Don't and... add, don't don't ask me what I was thinking at the time though, please. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, to this day, I'm still trying to figure that out. But the end results we're happy with. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. But you're a very impressive guy, man. I mean, you just tackle well, things head on, and uh, like whatever you touch, just and you don't you don't skimp on anything. I mean, you just have the best uh, tile, and you have you know yes. the best yeah. toilet and the best sink and the best <laughs> shower. <laughs> That's a Bro, lot of I would have gone down to Home Depot and paid 38 oh. bucks a door and been done with it, you know? <laughs> but you yeah, but the things. problem is, is you see the emotion. If there's, you have emotion into the house. So if it's a non-emotional thing, then, hey, I'll go to Home Cheapo all day long. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, when you're tied to something emotionally, just, you know you know that's just what it is so you know i got i gotta live there i gotta see it every day so i gotta be happy with it and if that's what makes me happy that's what makes me happy so uh, that's what i'm uh will will willing to shell out for i guess you could say so you know but yeah you're right it, it's uh good things just take longer to get and uh what, what is your better faster cheap kind of theory uh, a good fast and cheap Pick yeah two, that's only, all you yeah. get you can't have three 
Yes, and that's been uh, very good advice. So thank you for that, because uh, that holds very true, especially when remodeling or rebuilding, I should say, a house. <laughs> oh God, that's probably some of the best piece of advice my oh, dad's God, ever yeah, given me. Oh God, yeah, that goes hand, yeah. yeah, that goes hand in hand. And uh, don't don't be married while you're doing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every divorce lawyer just ready to go. <laughs> Because I definitely see why people like, I don't even know why you'd want to do that with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it's The worst part for me is doing the kitchen. I've remodeled a kitchen. Oh, and when yeah. you're washing dishes in, in your fucking bathtub, yeah. you're just like, Fuck Oh, my yeah, life. I've done that before. Oh, yeah. Fuck I had my that life. Before. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. My life is over. It's done. But I got yes. a good piece of advice for a kitchen. Anybody who wants to ever redo a kitchen. And now this is a little... Er, but hey, I took advantage of it anyway. So you can go down to your local Home Cheapo or go down to like uh, Blows. I'm sorry, Lowe's. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, and you can literally just go into the kitchen area department and be like, hey, um, here's my specs on my kitchen. Just give them the sizes and the, where the windows are or whatever. And they'll actually render a whole kitchen for you. So, and it takes kind of a bit of time. And I'm not going to lie. I did feel a little bit bad about doing it, but not anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I just got the rendering with all the specs and everything and i just took it to my cabinet guy and I'm like hey this is what i want he's like easy done <laughs> so, cost me half the price i think it was going to be like twenty seven thousand, you know for my cabinets i was like what really my kids is not that big but anyways um yeah i took it down and got it done for like like way less than like a, probably like a third of the price you know so it was uh so you sat behind the counter with the girl for three hours yeah. detailing out your kitchen took those yeah. plans did the plans yeah. cost you anything no no absolutely nothing they do it for free hey they're hourly right oh okay good <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean i felt kind of bad i was like hey maybe i should bring them lunch you know yeah. well, i won't be coming in here for at least a few months yeah. <laughs> I mean, where's just that guy the... that we just outlined his kitchen for him <laughs> yeah yeah for free yeah. <laughs> i mean i felt bad i'm not gonna lie i did i really wanted to like tip her a hundred bucks or something but then i'd probably make things even weirder right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're all look uh i'm not gonna use you guys but here's a subway sandwich i'm hoping yeah we're good. Hey, are, thanks. Are you want you extra good? meat on that yeah yeah i got you the six inch because i figured yeah. you probably should not be eating the 12 but you know because you're sitting around here on this desk all day yeah yeah you know watching the carbs for you honey watching the carbs oh yeah. man oh, that's <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, hey, pro tip, but hey, it works. And, uh, you know, it's a good way to get things done. And I needed something done. So there you go. <laughs> right on. Well done. Well done. <laughs> you hadn't told me that story. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, I'm not suggesting people do this, but hey, like. But, yeah. but I kind of am. You want to save 10 grand at least. Like, it's not a bad idea, you know. So, oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, so, but anywho, um, yeah. So, uh, what do we what do we got up next? What do we, uh, uh, let's see. Stocks. stocks. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Um. You know, I just kind of wanted to go over some of the the baseline stuff because uh, the people will ask me about a stock. What do you mm -hmm. think of this? And the first thing I do is I look and see, does it pay a dividend? Yeah, and, well, we kind of took that from what we learned. So yes. what we did is what, remember you in the beginning, we actually, that's that four o'clock in the morning, no girls hanging out, drinking whiskey. Uh, yes, we're doing. that one. So I was like, hey, you know, I know this guy, he can teach it, da, da, da. It was very expensive, but we're like, you know, we kind of vetted the whole process and it seemed like it was a, it was a good thing. And obviously we, we did that and glad we did do that. Um, and, but we kind of took what we learned and, but we're like you being kind of a stickler, you know, on money and me, myself, you know, kind of consider myself, uh, you know, um, for lack of a better word, uh, a little Jewish about things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> So hence uh, the Lowe's uh, story. You, you yeah, hence the Lowe's story. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to like jewel him out there, but yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> any hoots? Um, yeah. So you know, we we took that information and we kind of uh, kind of re-engineered it a little bit, and we kind of added, you know, well, hey, how can we protect ourselves? Because um, I was actually of all people, it was you know, I was just watching that you know that guy from Shark Tank, what's his name, Mister Wonderful. He's kind of annoying, but oh you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you know, hey, he's a very frugal guy and like, you know, obviously he has a lot of money, da da da, but a billionaire, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 just a little bit. But uh he uh, he actually just gave some I just remember it was just a little nugget of uh advice and he's like and I just kind of took that and he remember he said um, you know, I don't put my money in any stock that doesn't pay me back. And I was just like, I just really, that kind of really, uh, you know, spoke to me. And uh, so that's why I kind of took that advice. And I was like, wow, you know, that's actually, basically he doesn't 
put money in growth stocks is what he was trying to explain. Um, you know, that's his deal. You know, everybody has yeah. their own, of course. But, you know, we took that and we're like, hey, yeah. And then he was, you know, dividends. He's, he's big on the dividends, I guess. So we just kind of took that and implemented it into what we were doing because we didn't really, instead of doing all our, you know, stop losses and all that stuff and uh, figured we we're in it for the long haul. And that just kind of worked for what you were doing and what I was doing, you know. So um, we just kind of added that in, you know, it's, it's just kind of like an extra layer of insurance. Insurance, I guess you could say, right? That's the way I like. That's the way I look at it because, yeah, like, insurance. you know, forty hey, percent of the time we're going to be wrong and the stock goes yeah. down. Yeah, but every absolutely. three months we're getting that four or six percent dividend, and yeah. it's like I don't mind having my money locked up in something care. like that when when you're getting and paid. It doesn't every hurt. Months, it doesn't know? hurt when it goes down. You know, you're not really. I just don't feel tied to it. You know, and I just hey, I'm you know they all pay me. I got a whole big list of like a whole page that I can print out of just, you know, 10, 20, 30, all the way up to, you know, hundred and two hundred dollars worth of dividends, you know, that just keep coming through. And it's, it's just kind of nice to always be able to pull that money. Obviously you need a certain amount of money to kind of have a certain amount of dividends coming through, you know, you kind of need a lot to, to get, to get that through, but you know, it, it's nice. It's there. Hey, Hey, I'm not going to lie. I got, I call it my DCP TV. I just bought, right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Off the dividends. <laughs> Yeah, I, bought, I literally bought that. I was like, hey, man, I'm going to treat myself. You know, I'm going to get me a TV. <laughs> it's not on Craig. <laughs> um, no, so, uh, yeah, that was actually good. So I got my DCP uh, stock TV, you know, from uh, from actually what we made and actually paid us what, uh, like, a, God, we made a couple hundred bucks on dividends on that as well. So that was actually, that was a good little, that was a good little, still is a good stock. We're still in it, right? Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, it is. So, it, but, uh, uh, but yeah, so we, so as I was saying, yeah, we were just kind of taking, you know, what we learned, combining it with some traditional stuff. You threw in, you know, we started doing valuations on stocks, which was kind of cool, you know, sort of like, hey, is this, is this a good company? You know, we implemented a few rules that worked for us. And, you know, everything's been working so far for, you know, almost a couple of years now, you know, pretty solidly, even with the big crash, which we, we kind of knew that was coming, you know, at some point, it's not if yeah. it was when, yeah. and, you know, we have some stuff that, you know, like the downside is, yeah, we have a few things that are stuck in there, but I'm like kind of happy. I don't even, I don't even care to be honest. I just look at them like it's a house, right. You know, it's some equity and it's going to come back, you know, but at the, during that time period, it's still paying us, you know, so yeah, yeah. Still getting, and it's you know, easy to find the, uh, you just Google does you know uh british petroleum pay a dividend and uh right. I, I just got i just got a little thing saved on my computer on a bookmark mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's uh like the nasdaq uh, mm -hmm. site and anyways you can see the list of uh dividends and when they have paid out and, and yeah. basically we look yeah. for dividends that pay out every three months every quarter or maybe twice a year but, yeah, well, you know, if unless they're unless they're the uh, the foreign ones, which are called the ADRs generally, and you know that, but you know those have been really good for us too. I think we're I think I, last time I checked, I think we're in about forty percent you know, of overseas stocks. You know, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's actually worked out really well too. So like, don't be scared of emerging with what do they call them emerging markets? You know, basically like stocks that are outside of the U.S. That yeah. you know, there's a lot of great companies that we found and we've we made some money on Russian oil stocks, made some money on like banks in Buenos Aires and, you yeah, know, like Scotland and Scot yeah. Yeah, yeah, RB, bank RB, in Brazil, RB, RBG, <laughs> bank in Brazil, yeah. you know? So it's like, you know, don't be, since, since we're not really in there for these huge long periods of time, you know, it's like, not really kind of scared of them so to speak you know what i mean so yeah I, it's been it's worked out just as well i believe um just as well as any like you know stock here you know i don't really personally i just don't really see too much of a difference since we're not doing it for this huge long-term run you know yeah. um i would say what are we usually in like you know if, if we get lucky you know we might be in something for you know a month or two you know generally speaking what three uh three months three four months maybe a long haul would be maybe like six six seven months if we get stuck in something for that long yeah before we're able to pull it out so yeah. really not the time period's not really that long you know what i mean so i'm pretty comfortable you know sticking things in you know different places around the world i guess you could say yeah yeah anything that looks looks profitable you know and right, just yeah. because they say that they're going to pay a dividend doesn't necessarily mean that 
they will. Uh, well, but yeah, we got out of one. the thirty stocks that we've gotten, I think only yeah. one has not followed one. through with their with their dividend. And it was just this year, and I think it's uh, I think Australian it's Australian. Yeah, it was Australian Bank. Uh, I think it was Westpac. I think it was okay. Westpac. Uh, That's which one it was. Yeah, out of Aust- I think Australian Bank. Um, that they stopped their dividend for this year, but they were going to pick it back up next year. But like, who cares? Like, whatever. Yeah. It's not like you know whatever. we got like thirty. I got like 39 other ones. I'm like, whatever, who cares? Yeah. So they don't pay me for a little while and it's down, but you know, one out of so many, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's a rate of attrition, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so don't, yeah. don't find too much, too much of a problem with that considering the numbers. Right. Yeah. Another interesting thing we've learned too, mm-hmm. is if the dividend, mm-hmm. if it seems to get like in the double digits, if it's paying like 11% or something, that's something that you should be a little wary of. You of know course, what I mean? Because absolutely. it means that they're having trouble, uh, you know, they want, for people they want buying you. their stock and they want to entice them into it. And yeah. so they throw out this outrageous dividend. I mean, some of the ones we've seen were like 17 or 20%. It's we've like, gotten paid on some of those as well though but we weren't we in have. for long long periods of time we got in what's called because you have to get in by what's called the x dividend date yeah. um and so once if you can get in before that date then obviously you're going to get paid on that that time around um and what you got in for so um yeah that's actually you know you, you're right you got to be careful i mean I, there's kind of a you know there's not an exact number you know i mean i i personally like the you know three to seven percent you know what i mean that's a pretty like you generally speak in a good marker, yeah. you know, yeah. when it starts I was going to say four to six, but same thing. Yeah. 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 You have two cents of a difference halfway. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, just, I would say, yeah, once it gets, starts creeping past that, like 8%, you got to start questioning it, right? Like over 10, it's like, okay, well, what's going on here? You know, and it's generally the company needs money for some reason or another, but you know, don't be scared of them. I mean, it's not, I mean, if you just dig a little deeper on certain things, right. It's like, so we found some really, I think, uh, LYG, um, that was, uh, LYG ticker with Lloyd's Lloyd's banking, yeah. Lloyd's banking. Um, that was a, uh, English bank, I mean, English, Scotland, I don't know. Um, anyways, but yeah, that was like, well, I think that was like a 12, 13 percenter. And then, you know, we, we've actually been in that a couple of times and, uh, um, got dividends out of that and, uh, you know, checked out of it. I think we're still in RBG or is it RBG? I think we're still in one of those, um, uh, RBS, 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 RBS yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, we've been into that, uh, like two or three times in each one of those stocks and done pretty decent on you know, all, all the way around. So, uh, but yeah, I always say, you know, you got to question it, right? After, after a certain percentage, you're like, hey, well, what's going on here? You know, so yeah, you, I think it's, it's a, uh, you know, error on the side of caution, I guess, you know, and, uh, you know, do your vetting and do, you know, your, you know, stick to your principles. And, uh, but, but like I said, we're not scared of them, but definitely we vet them more, you know, unless it looks like a really good setup, right? If it looks like a fantastic setup, then, I mean, we've gone in on a, on a lot of stuff that've paid high dividends, you know? So we're not necessarily, I would say, in it specifically for the dividend because we see a really good setup, you know? And we're like, hey, this is a good setup. Um, you know, let's, hey, let's try to get in and get out of this thing, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's uh uh it's gambling, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, yeah, but calculated. Like it's, yeah. It's calculated yeah. gambling, you know. Yeah, calculated gambling, I guess, you know. Um, but you know, I I think with uh I mean really haven't lost, you know, so you know, I, I kind of, you know, I, I, you know, we're gambling is so strong, you know, it's on it. But I think if you're educated, you know, well, I know now, you know, I just wish, you know, I started doing this a lot. I just didn't want to have to like stare at stuff all the time. But <laughs> that was my kind of reasoning for not really getting into the stock market. I'm like, I don't want to have something that I got to stare at all the time or whatever. But, you know, I think after the realization, um, you know, some years back, like, hey, you know, you got to do what you do for eight hours or your, whatever your time is during the day do your stocks, do your real estate. And that's how you climb up. I mean, there's not really, there's no magic, you know what I mean? (laughs) There's no like magic farm or like, you know, selling escargot or something or like, you know, there's no like, you know, people trying to sell you, you know, potions and, you know, it's it's like, (laughs) do what you're doing for whatever time it is during the day, do your stocks, do your real estate. The stocks and the real estate offset each other, you know, in good times and bad. And that's really it. I really haven't found any other magic formulas. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I've had like three people in the last week tell me mm-hmm. that they came in 
mm-hmm. with some money and they were like, mm-hmm. uh, what, what should I put it in right now? It's just sitting in my bank account. And mm-hmm. I told yeah. all of them, I'm like, I, I would open up an account with Vanguard and For I would starters, just park it right. in yeah. uh, their federal money market uh, fund. Yeah. And that'll get you 2%. So at least yeah, it's like you're 1.9. With- it fluctuates 1.9 to 2.1 or whatever it is, yeah. right? So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, at the very least, it's like if you go down to your local bank, right? They're trying to, like, you know, you get the guy in there and he's always trying to be like, hey, well, I can really I can get you, like, you know, this uh, 2 3% on a CD. I'm like, dude, I just stick my money in, like, like Ameritrade or Vanguard and the money just sits there and I get get two percent so what well, why yeah would I and i have money? access to it i don't have to like, <laughs> yeah yeah it's not I, tied I get, up there yeah. yeah it's not tied up for a year you know so i can get your like cd at 2.3 percent i'm like oh wow oh wow oh, i'm so <laughs> hey, excited hey, i just creamed yeah. my pants hold yeah, on yeah <laughs> yeah hold on i gotta change my underwear <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i just don't see how people get excited about i mean look i get it it's safe and everything if you just got so much money you just got to like park it places you know like you yeah. know but you know you're doing things on a large scale and probably part of the panama papers at that point right <laughs> yeah 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 so. it's a yeah that they're saying like 25 50k you know and i'm like yeah just put it in there if you're not going to touch it for like, the next yeah if you just yeah, you don't know what you're going to do the only downside it, right? is that it takes three to five business days to right. get your money back uh, into your bank account, but as long as you don't have it's some fucking emergency th- where you need fifty grand a, a day, yeah, then... but it's still pretty liquid. I mean, that's pretty yeah. liquid. Yeah, you I know, mean, it's not it's... like sticking it in your house and you know you're trying to pull out equity, did and you're going through a refi, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 it only take you sixty days to get, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I mean I kind of like parking some cash in there. You know, I kind of feel like good about it. You know, and I think the longer it sits there, the more comfortable you kind of feel with it. Obviously, it's not FDIC insured, so you know that would be the kind of downfall probably on it. Yeah. But you know, it's like well, you know, I'll take my chances. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's not I like I don't so, think Vanguard's going anywhere. You so. know, we're still the number one uh, economy in the world. You know, China's climbing on us, but you know, hey, you know, the dollar doesn't matter where you go, dude. You can be in. Uh, you know the most eastern end of the world and they'll still take a dollar so i'm pretty comfortable with that <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> which yeah. is very true it doesn't matter where you travel in the world try try exchanging some rubles they ain't gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> i've been in this situation before i'm like yeah, I, I got some american dollars we deal hell yeah we'll take those you will take that yeah <laughs> yeah uh, some yeah, of the countries got... i've been to that's their currency they use uh, oh yeah USD. well hey venezuela venezuela they use american dollars you know the weird thing over there is that it's, it's so i mean because they're so deep their money so devalued you have like a truckload of money just to get a hot dog yeah. um <laughs> but they use like bank of america like they all have like bank of american like like cards that they use it's so weird so there's something definitely weird going on with that but yeah they use american dollars in venezuela for some odd reason but um <laughs> I don't know what that is, but hey, that's a whole nother show for you. <laughs> yeah, I found that, and I think it was El Salvador. I think, yeah, it was. Yeah, it well, was they take El dollars. Salvador. They go anywhere in the world. They take. I was in Cambodia, man. I was like, you know, giving dollars to shoot RPGs. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did that too. <laughs> oh yeah, I did the RPGs, dude. I just didn't know. I was doing it. Did it in my flip flops, though. I'm like, yeah, probably not the smartest thing in the world, but hey. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't do the try. RPG. Joe and I did. Uh, oh, we you did. We did, do that? we did hand grenades. That's what. Oh, we did. you did the hand grenade. We did yeah, the hand the, grenade. It was a little lackluster on that because it wasn't to quite the... as big of an explosion as I right. thought it would be. Well, they right? had us throw. Yeah, they had us throw it at their hand grenades in the water, and I was like, the poof, and I yeah. was like, it was like. Look like some, I don't know, it was just a big fish that took a, you know, you know, who <laughs> just letting out some <laughs> oxygen or something, you know? Like, yeah. It was like, it was like lackluster experience with the grenades, I have to admit. But, you know, hey, um, but the RPG was, uh, yeah, they're like, hey, uh, you want to, if you want, do you want to blow up a cow? I'm like, yeah, that probably wouldn't have many friends left on Facebook, but um, I think I'll just pass on that one. <laughs> like, you don't want the cow for $200? I'm like, nah, well, if I could eat it, maybe, but I'm going to blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> the ribs will already be cooked by the time yeah, you walk over they, to yeah, them, right? yeah, like charcoal ash ribs <laughs> yeah um yeah so i kind of passed on the cow so i just decided to like blow up the side of a hill so that was just me so, um, cool. yeah that was a, that was pretty uh that was that was a pretty like the the backfire on that whole thing the expl- i mean shooting rpgs is uh whew, yeah that's pretty fun stuff man i'm not gonna lie and then the m60s blowing stuff Oh, you got to shoot an M60. Oh, yeah. With big, giant, nasty bullets, dude. Probably as big as a skull, man. Just blowing oh. stuff up all over the place, man. Like, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> yeah, I was, I uh, feel like, like Rambo, dude. It was more like Tropic Thunder out there. <laughs> so. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so, great. Uh, yeah, Cambodia <laughs> RPGs. Go for it. Good times, man. <laughs> yes, yes. I did. I did those grenades. I don't think I shot a weapon. No, I oh, didn't. Oh man, you gotta shoot. Grenades. You gotta do the M60s, man. You gotta get those big old like other on the tripod, and you're like two hands, poof, poof. You know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> i'm like i knew i should have joined the military <laughs> i'm good at this <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome <laughs> yeah so uh so any yes dividends yes <laughs> uh yeah that's right <laughs> yeah so dividends is one of the things we look for um mm. what are some other uh, things um and definitely the um when you look at a stock look mm -hmm. at it over yeah. the over the life of it you know if uh, it's something like microsoft or whatever that's been around for that's a long some history. time history yeah yeah that's look at it doing. from yeah. we try to avoid ones that have only been around a couple of years you know right, because you really right. don't have uh, there's no history to it and you know and um and I, I don't know what weight that holds um but um you know we 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 definitely uh, you know stay away from kind of like a lot of the growth stock stuff unless it's hey you know it's google or facebook or something that you think you know you want to put some money in some ai stuff great for the long term but that's not really stuff that we plan on making money on right so we just kind of stick to the kind of dividend stuff you know the steady eddies as we like to say right yeah 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 one that uh that we did recently was uh coca-cola mm -hmm. the um oh yeah uh, we just sold that so if yeah. you're uh, I'm at actually yeah my my TC2000 which is the software that we use. Um, yeah, yeah. That. I'm yeah. I'm on the same one. I'm looking at Coca-Cola. The the, yeah. the ticker symbol is KO, so mm -hmm. uh, the yep. listener can look up uh, KO. Yeah. And don't be confused with the one that's uh, two hundred and thirty two dollars a share though. So if you look up Coke, I just noticed that there's an like an international Coke or something that's like a couple hundred bucks. So the, oh, Coke, okay. the, the KO we're looking at is uh, forty nine. It's like it's trading at forty nine thirty three right now. Okay. Yeah. And, um, we, uh, uh, so it basically like if you can picture Charlie Brown's shirt, you know, how it kind of has that, that, uh, um, line that goes up and down and up and down. Um, yeah. what, what's that, what's that called? Is Charlie Brown? Know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, right. squiggly line, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So basically what we're looking for is when the price goes up and then comes back down to a point right. that it's already been before. Right. You know, uh, yeah, exactly. Right. So it's, yeah. you know, maybe three months before it was also at this price and three right. months before it started going up after it reached that. It's kind of like, you Support know, there's resistance. Line. Yeah, there's all these people that are looking at exactly the same graphs that we are and that you are. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. when they see it get down to, you know, maybe 45 bucks. Right. Uh, and it's also gotten down to 45 bucks when you look over the um, uh, the life, life of uh, right. of the stock several times it um it makes it likely that it's going to go back up after that but what we usually try to do is once let's say that the the point that we're looking at is 45 dollars mm -hmm. you know it gets down to 45 dollars goes up to like 50 and then comes mm -hmm. back down again at 45 dollars three months later it's kind of hitting a bounce basically yeah it's right? kind of yeah, hitting yeah. like a little bounce and right. what we so like to do is once it's hit that lower level at 45 bucks, we like to wait for it to go up a little bit again, you know, right. uh, to, you know, if we can wait for it to go up about 10% of the distance that it had fallen, yeah, then great. it gives us a little bit more of an indication like, okay, it's probably, uh, you know, found the bottom and it's on its way back up. And right. that's it's reversed usually itself when we... is yeah basically yeah. It's, it's, it's reversing itself and it's 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 setting up to make basically what we call a run and what we call a setup yes yes a setup and so we have in our list here what 60 stocks or something that we're just kind of yeah. always watching yeah and uh when we see these setups we already know that they all pay dividends you know because we've yeah. taken uh you know two or three years to compile this list yeah. And, uh, and we kind of know about like, oh, okay, China Mobile's down around 35 bucks and the thing just bounces between 35 and $50 right. year after year after year. Yeah. Once it gets down there and we see the little setup, we fire, we know it pays a dividend and yeah. we're just, we have these little, at least, I, you do the same thing. I, I'm sure is you just set an alert on your phone. Right. Uh, the app is even free. And once it gets up to your target, whether it's $42 or 58 or whatever it is, uh then you know a little alert goes off and you go huh all right it's time to sell that one 
<laughs> you or, know? or or like we did before, but this is really hasn't worked out that well as of just because, you know, there hasn't been making too big of a runs on things, but we were setting things. Um, we're probably setting the expectations a little high, yeah. uh, but, you know, we were uh, setting it to, to automatically sell, which is uh, something you can do also. So, um, yeah. because we, we missed out previously, I think it was a, uh, BBGI. Was oh, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, we missed that. And we, we would have put an automatic sell on that. Um, we would have like doubled our money, you know, and it's just like, we actually, you missed that. And I missed that. It was like, it was like, I would think oh, maybe a week went by and we're like, oh, duh, we should have sold that. Um, it just shot up to like, was like, we bought it at like, Two fifteen and like shot up to like six dollars or something, you know. So yeah, it was um, it was, and we went through that and we're just like, oh god. It, but it was the kind of thing where it it shot one up day. Uh, it was like yeah, one day, yeah, in one day in a period yeah. of a couple of hours. So unless right. we're just intensely watching our phone, we yeah, we never would have known, you know. But putting that auto sell in there, sometimes these stocks just get on a runway freight train and they go up yeah. several dollars in 15 minutes and then they shoot right back down. And I don't know what causes that, but if you have an auto sell in there, yeah. you can capture that. TK or, Tankers, man, we uh, remember that we we sold that and then it shot up from like thirteen to like twenty two dollars and we're like, oh, we missed that boat. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> literally, right? Yes. <laughs> It was a tanker company, you know, uh, ocean <laughs> tanker, Tiki, Tiki, TK, Tiki. Yeah, I think. Yes. Was T yeah. So yeah, definitely. And it's still around. I still watch it going, ah, damn it. It's still around 20 something damn dollars. <laughs> I could, I was a contender. It's like I've turned into a stock fish story. <laughs> so uh but yeah yeah no no absolutely um yeah that's uh you know make it, getting those um you know those to, to make it so it sells automatically it really hasn't worked out amazing for us but uh, but at least we know like hey it's an option right and it's there and you know if you're just kind of less thinking and you just kind of want to set things you know but you know don't be too much or like hey a 25 dollars stock well it sells at 50 dollars, then sell it you know be realistic about it you know <laughs> yeah 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 another thing we do too is we seem to try to um get stocks that are price range between like a buck mm. and what fifty dollars or something yeah i mean what do they consider penny stocks or what do they consider penny stock is under ten dollars is really what's considered a penny stock right so yeah. anything kind of but yeah i mean i like personally like me i like those i know because it's like you know the amount of money that you put in on it you you can have a like you know a sh very short amount of time if it goes up like you know 50 cents you're like oh wow hey we could pull out of this thing at this point as opposed to a you know a, a 200 you know a tesla stock which is you know hey that's a good story right in itself that's a gross stock that we were waiting for what did it it just split i believe but um that stock you know we were like it's a gross stock we we're just kind of stuck in it for like six months right didn't pay a dividend or anything you know we that was that uh, was frustrating yeah because we bought it at 245 yeah. i think or 230 yeah, 40, something yeah. like that and then yeah. it immediately went down to 180 and we're just stuck and that's when we realized we're like we yeah. ain't getting paid shit on this thing yeah and yeah that might have yeah. been one of the ones where we're like this is dumb we should be investing in ones that have dividends and i didn't know you got it from mr wonderful that's that's kind of cool but when you said that i'm like dude that yeah is i think just, i was just i was that's probably a free insurance one night. <laughs> you know yeah, it's, it's just it's, yeah it's, it's like free yeah insurance. it's free yeah exactly that's the way i i like there's a lot of people who kind of like i mean there's a lot of people who who are against the dividend thing and they're like oh well you know and they're for a lot of different reasons and that's that's probably a whole nother show but you know and just personal experience, you know, was starting with literally like $500, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, you know, it's worked out really, I mean, I ever, over the last years, it's just worked out really nice, you know, I, and I, I just feel like comfortable, like I'm good, like I don't really care, you know, if the stock goes down, like, yeah, whatever. I don't, I don't really care. I'm like, yo, what I care about is getting paid. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, that's what I care about. And yeah. I getting paid, you know what I mean? And I, I like that, you know, um, I think when we're, when I was, you know, very green, you know, um, I don't consider, you know, I'm a professional by any means, but, um, but I'm pretty comfortable in the fact that I can make some money out of this, you know, um, uh, I, we got stuck and I, I went back and I, I looked at a Vodafone and I, and I bought that it had in from after what we learned i went back and as you did too on some of the stuff that you bought that were bad as well um it was not a bad stock i just bought it at a bad time and what was yeah. the most important thing was to learn 
you know, at least from my experience, and I believe yours as well, was, yo, when do I buy this? When do I sell it? I think those are probably the two most important things when you're kind of talking about stocks as far as like, hey, when should I buy this thing? And when should I sell this thing, right? Yep. So yeah. I think once you can learn those two things, um, and it's not 100%, but you know, if, if you can, if your batting average, as long as you can get your batting average up there, um, you know, then that's, that's the success, you know, at least to me. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like it. It's a lot of fun. Just like, yeah, yeah, no, Coke, no, it's, you yeah, know, it's we been good. put our money in there for three weeks or whatever. We made our 10% and then we're out. Yeah. And that was uh, a short run. That was, yeah. that was short, you know, we even we got like a little $8 dividend or something. <laughs> yeah. Man. I got like, yeah, like, yeah, I think I, I, think I got like, like eight ninety five. but Hey man, yeah. I'm like, Hey, that's a pour over coffee, right? Exactly. <laughs> I think they're like four dollars at Starbucks, you know, and yeah. you gotta wait. But you know, <laughs> for that, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, Subway sandwich. <laughs> yes. Long on special. <laughs> so hey, I'm like, yo, it's free, it's me. So yeah, mm -hmm. no, the dividends are good. So I mean, I I, I like them, and uh, you know, with I'm like surpassing what you know, doubling my dividends that I had last year and expect to do that again over the next coming year. And uh, yeah, it's just nice, man. It's, it's just really nice. Like, like I said, um, bought my, bought my DCP TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, uh, last year I did, I think uh, I, I'm going off the top of my head now. I haven't done the math. A couple since, thousand or? Since, no, I did uh 12 K worth of bets and I think yeah. I made 14 or 1800. So it came out to uh 14 percent it was almost 15 percent yeah i would say like so. on the average i mean uh, we're talking like what like yeah i mean we're well over t 10 well the thing is you're using that money over a course of a period so if you have like you know five thousand dollars and you make let's say you know let's say you got a crappy bet and crappy setup in there and, and you got a couple good ones but over the course of the year you know you can use that five thousand dollars well, we try to use it four times. That seems to be the kind of max. So, you know, on $5,000, let's say, you know, making, just say 10, you know, let's say you average 10%, which is pretty easy to do. Yeah. Um, but you're using that over the course of, you know, four times in one year, right? So in reality, it's 500 like, bucks, 500 bucks, 500 yeah, bucks, 500 bucks. Four yeah. times. Yeah. I mean, that would be in a, a perfect situation, but, you know, even let's say it was three to, you know, 400, you know, what did that before that 60 so you'd be hoping to make it maybe like around sixteen hundred dollars off that five thousand dollars that you had in there right so yeah um over the course of the year but sometimes you know you with that same money we go in there and maybe we have a couple that are stuck you know and they just take six months so maybe we can only use that money you know that same money twice a year but uh, on the average two to four times in a year with that same money yeah yeah and kind of, it, uh, that's how it's been kind of working out you know four is a good four is a good one two at the very minimal you'll be able to use it at least twice right so that that brings up your batting average pretty high yeah yeah i've, I've got um let's see uh, about 30k worth of bets uh, this year so i think by the end of the year i'll have tripled what i did last year but that's the thing you know you just keep building the bankroll uh, yeah and you know then you can you may start off making two or three hundred dollar bets, and then you graduate yeah. to five hundred. Then you go up to a yeah. thousand, and then two thousand. And our goal, like you said, is is do five. We want a hundred k, doing five k bets each time. That yeah, way, 20, you know, ten percent gets you five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks is something. Yeah, that is, is yeah. nice. You know, whereas if you're only doing a grand, ten percent, you know, it's a hundred dollars. It's better than nothing. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a kind uh, of a kick in the it's kind of a kick in the butt. But yeah, you kind of you know that's like that old adage, right? You need money to make money, but you kind of do when you're talking stocks. Let's just be honest about things. You yeah. really need at least you know. I mean, obviously, you can start playing, and you see people who you know who you know that you know. Well, I made you know one million dollars with five thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Look out to what I have here. You like what you see, you know. <laughs> But uh, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, you really, you really do, but you need to build it and you'll build it fast. Like, you, you know, if you just, like, I, I just, you know, personally play games, you know, and just try to sock it away, you know, and then pretty soon you got a pretty good roll coming. And then, you know, that 100 goes to 200, the 200 goes to 300, and then you just start building up when you're, um, when you're cashing out your stuff. And, but it's, it's a long haul thing and you got to be in it. You got to make it, you have to make a commitment and just make it an integral part. Like I didn't want to do it to be 
up front, you know, I, there was a good part of my life that I was like, Oh God, I can't, I don't want to be bothered staring at stuff all day, you know, but you know, um, I just think it's, it's, it's an important piece of the puzzle if you're trying to like build your worth, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. you know, you just, you kind of, it's just one of the, and if you don't want to deal with anything, then, Hey, just throw it in ETF and just be quiet and just, whatever you know but um i think you can just gain a lot more if you're just active about it and i think we've been very active about it and it's 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 paid off you know yeah. um you don't we're spending less amount of time because you know what to do but obviously for the first you know year you kind of got to be in it and you kind of get you got to get to know the companies they all have their own kind of personalities in a way and you kind of get to know them you kind of get to know oh yeah coca-cola it's around 40 50 bucks you know this is around 20 this you know what i mean so yeah. you, you got to get comfortable and uh, i think once you get to that point which is you know something where i think you and and uh, myself are, are, are pretty starting to get pretty comfortable with stuff there's still obviously a lot of learning and uh but yeah it's it's uh uh, it's fun. And, uh, you know, I'm not a total, f I don't sit around and love like financials all day, but you know, it, it's nice to be able to pull money out whenever you want. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a friend that, uh, called me and I probably should have told him, uh, mm. to spread out his variance a little bit more. I did. I guess I just thought it was natural, but anyways, he had about, uh, I think it was $21,000 that uh, mm -hmm. he wanted to invest. And I, mm -hmm. um, Anyways, I within a day or so, I told him about three that uh, that I was buying. You know, one was uh, Penny Mac, another one was uh, mm -hmm. Delta, and Penny uh, Mac was good. Oh, Penny Mac was amazing, right? Yeah. We, Anyways, we I told him those that. three, yeah. and then when I texted him a couple days later, I'm like, "Hey, I'm going to pick this one up too." He's all, "I'm out of money," and I'm like, "Wait, what?" And he's all, "Yeah, what? I put seven thousand on each one of those that you told me." I'm like, "Holy <laughs> shit!" Hey, <laughs> hey, like, oh, hey word of word of advice to everybody, you know, your listeners and everything. If anybody asks you, you know, like what stock or whatever, just disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. <laughs> like, hey, I got people that ask me, and I'm like, hey, look, this is what I'm buying. Whatever happens, this is on you. I don't want anything to do with this. Like, yes. you know what I mean? This is what yeah. I'm doing. I'm more than happy to share this information with you. But disclaimer. You know, anything happens, hey, you know, that's that's on them. You know, yeah, you gotta, yeah. You, gotta, like, like, you know, whatever your role is, let's say it's ten grand. I would spread right. that out over twenty different bets. You know what I mean? Do five yeah, well, percent on each it, bet. You know, so do a five hundred dollar uh, bet on each one. Different of those industries, different. Grand. You know, just you know, and yeah. So I'm. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. get you know twenty. So, anyways, what happened, and, Steve? <laughs> uh, well, he made a he made a killing on uh, Penny Mac. Penny Mac, uh, yeah. But he still hasn't sold it, which I'm a little confused. What? Yeah, I, I, I don't. He know. didn't sell Penny Mac. It says it like uh, it it dropped from about twenty bucks to about seventeen eighty seven. I think is what. Yeah, we got out of it at nineteen fifty or something or whatever. We I yeah, remember we three extra grand. money. You know we. A, uh, yeah, I made a quick thousand bucks and took off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, see a penny. Yeah. And it, you know, the funny thing is, that's my mortgage company. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, got you, bitch. <laughs> got you, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if he's still in Delta or not. I, I, I don't oh, think Oh, God, the airlines. Yet. Oh, yeah, those things aren't popping. I mean, they're, they're, they come up and down, but the airlines, I mean, airlines, banks, those things are, I just, and that's just my own belief, you know, they're just not, it's just going to take a little time for them to start making moves. I, mean, I just believe it's a little bit more of a long-term kind of deal with those things. You know, when I say long-term, I mean, at least a year, you know what I mean? Until yeah. maybe they'll, they start coming back kind of like, kind of like Bank of America in 2000, uh, what was it? 2009. I think it was like, uh, my story was, that's when I knew I should have started doing stocks. Cause I remember looking at Bank of America and it was like at $4 and like 20 cents. And I was like, I know that's a good thing, but I don't know why, but I just didn't know, you know, and it shot up to like, I don't know, like 50 dollars i'm like god i could i could have that was a that was another fish story right and yeah. that's that i think when i saw that i think that was the trigger of like yeah i think i need to be get in on this and figure this whole thing out you know yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. um and i think that's the kind of case right now you know with a lot of these kind of bank stuff i think it took all 2008 to make 2009 right so yeah. um it's uh I, I think a lot of those are they just i mean that's personal you know everybody has their own thoughts but i just kind of try to avoid the bank stuff and uh any airlines and even though we're in some of those right now but they're just kind of like long haulers and you know collect some dividends along the way right yeah 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 
So, oh, cool. well, hopefully he gets his money out. <laughs> not for a while, but, uh, well, he should have, well, he's pretty stupid probably for not selling the Penny Mac thing. Cause I just don't, cause it's uh, the average on the Penny Mac is like, what, like $25 or something, you know? So, you know, you're going to wait for that extra five bucks. He already made a bunch of money on it. Might as well leave. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like when I was looking at it and when we got out, we got out just before it started going back down. Yeah. Uh, um, by the way, I want to make a note. Um, I called that out. <laughs> you did call that out. Yes, you did. You wanted to stay. You had to talk to me into uh, selling it. I had to talk it. you into it. Uh, and a free lap dance. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, I just wanted to take a little bit of credit. No. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Hey, 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 hey. You, you, you talked me into stuff, too. So, hey, uh, you got me on Amber Crombie and Fitch, and I finally went in on that, and I just sold it, actually. So there you go. And that was because nice. of you. It was yeah. on my watch list because of you. <laughs> Good, good, good. So, uh, yeah, that was, did you sell it? No, I still got it. it oh, my uh, God. Are I'm you serious? I'm hoping it goes up. Again? My target price is like 14 bucks. It's at 1230 right now. Like, I, I, uh, maybe hanging. this is a mistake. But you're like hanging on for a bite of cheese at this point. Jesus. Okay. I bought it at 8 bucks, and now it's at 1230 So uh, you got it in real quick in and out. You got it at like 1080 I think, and yeah. got out at like 1280 or something. So you made that in like three days or whatever it was it was pretty quick. yeah 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 i took my yeah. money and run yeah 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 I'm, uh, i don't know we'll see I, when i look over the life of it you might no don't that. get me wrong there's a lot of room there and you know it's not like a bad deal and it pays so you know has a nice dividend to it and you know it's yeah they've been around forever and yeah so but you know hey in and out but you know just you're long hauling on that one a little but no, no harm no fell either yeah. way yeah that one I'm long hauling and the airlines I'm long hauling. Yeah. You know, I mean like Delta, too. it's average price was around 55, 60 bucks before COVID and yeah. it's at 31 now. Um, yeah. You know, so I'm long hauling that one. Um, yeah. Copa. Copa. Oh, that was a <laughs> yeah. good one, wasn't it? Man. Yeah. Yeah. We got into that one too. Yeah. That was good. Uh, Six Flags Magic Mountain's looking pretty good right now. Oh my now. God. You called that one so well. Yeah, uh, we, that's got, like, we got in there at like 13 bucks. Now it's around 23, but yeah. the average price before COVID was 50. Yeah. You know, at, um, it's still, yeah. I think it's still a good time to get into quite a few of these. Obviously you just need to know, you know, when to buy them exactly and not like uh, high, high, um, not buying them too high, you know, in the, um, what we call the stochastics. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's been EIX. I think we're following that, which is um, Edison as well. That's uh, um, their inter international one. So just picked that up about last week. So we're, we're waiting for that one. That one's starting to look really good though. It's, uh, it's setting itself up pretty well. So it's, it's looking good. Yeah, yeah, I like, uh, I like that one. We missed Budweiser. That one would have been perfect. We definitely for missed, like but yeah, bucks, you know? I I found. I remember I found that one, and I don't even know why we didn't go in on that. Um, I don't know either. I, it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you found it at like fifty three or yeah. fifty five, and now it's up yeah. almost at sixty. I'm like, that's the perfect ten percent right there. What the yeah, I don't know thinking? what happened. Why did, how did we miss it? Yeah. Uh, also, Win Hotels. I just. Uh, I don't know if I. Uh, I found that, and then I we missed it. And so I remember I just didn't say anything. It kind of reversed itself, <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh man. Um, missed that we we missed that and it just went up it went up like seven eight bucks but we could have been in it but it was a little bit more of an expensive not ex expensive stock but you know it was over fifty dollars so i think it was like sixty seventy dollar stocks and that's okay. difficult as well sometimes because it's like sometimes you see something really good like duke energy um i think you just went da back down to like i that was another one we missed out on as well so um so we definitely miss things you know still do um can't get everything but that went up from like 79 to like 87 you know and it just came back down to like around 79 80 so i think it might, might be a good time setting itself up again possibly so um that's something we're looking at right now yeah so, you know i'm I, it's funny you mentioned duke i was looking that up before we got on steady the eddie steady eddie it's, stock uh, you know yeah, I I'm kind of man. I wish we would have yeah. had incredible foresight and got it down at 63 when uh, COVID. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like whatever. Yeah, they're absolutely. all like that. We got a bunch of those bets in that uh, right after COVID. I those are going to be very profitable. I think. Yeah, six yeah. to twelve months from now. You know. Yeah. No. No. Absolutely. Um, that's the. But that's uh, the but yeah, I'm I'm looking at Duke right now. It's looked like we're setting up that Charlie Brown pattern. Yeah. Uh, quite nicely the last time yeah, the duke's was... looking duke energy is starting to set itself up really nice just needs to do a couple of things 
um, I believe. And then um, it might be, like I said, it's an expensive stock. So it's like in order to make anything off it, like you got to put some money into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't go and put like, you know, even like, even like a thousand bucks ain't really going to get you anything. Right. So it's yeah. like, I mean, you got, you got to, you got to put a little bit of roll into it. So, um, but you have your rules, you know, what, what is your rule? 5%? What's your bankroll? Don't look. I, that's just a general advice. Yeah. Don't do yeah. what uh, my buddy did and put 33% yeah. of don't your be Steve's on friend. one bet. <laughs> yeah. Don't <laughs> put don't all think. your money yeah. in the basket. You know, yeah, you know, out of 20 bets, you're going to have two or three home runs. Yeah. Uh, most of them are just going to go sideways and you'll get paid a dividend. And yeah. then there'll be a few that go down and you're stuck in for a year or whatever. But yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. And it's, I mean, if you get unlucky with those three bets, there goes your whole role and you can't, you can't do anything for a that's year. Just, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just, he got really very good. fortunate. And then one of them was a home run and the other two were, were profitable, but that's certainly not going to go like that every time, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. He got, I, I yeah. Just, like when Joe uh, came to us and he's like, okay, tell me what to do. I got five grand. I'm like, oh, right, our perfect. friend Joe. Yeah. I love yeah, Joe. I was like every bet is $250. Just keep it at that. And he's yeah. like, all right. And he followed the program, but. Yeah, yeah, I know, but he didn't sell his stuff. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's the thing. Is I'm like, oh, bro, you, you, like, you just made money. Sell yeah. your stuff, Joe. So he's, he's like, eh. he's like ah, I'm gonna keep it. And yeah, I'm just, just gonna keep it. You know, lost right? his ass. I'm like, oh, you have to watch this. You know. It's yeah, like, you yeah. know, you can lead the horse to the water, but you know, if they drink, it's on them. Yeah. <laughs> so, word of advice. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is, you know, with this whole thing, like, I'm very like, you know, kind of candid, you know, with people and very like. Like, you know, just, you know, I, I don't care. You know, I just tell people my experience. So I'm like, yeah, I can make some money. Like, you know, I, th I think I made like, you know, like a couple thousand, almost a couple thousand bucks last month, you know, with everything. And I was like, Hey, that's cool, man. That's like a, that's a part-time job, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But you know, you can, it's funny because, you know, you can tell, give people advice and all this stuff. And I feel like they feel like they have to pay for it and you know, for it to mean anything. <laughs> There's something to that. I, I yeah, there is a component there. When you tell people, what, like, hey, I'm going to give you a free lap dance. No, nah, I'd rather pay for the lap dance. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why is it free? Do you stink? <laughs> yeah, you know, there's like, there's some component to that. I don't know. It's psychological or something that we feel like we need to like pay for it um, in, order, in order for it to have value, right? So it's yeah. like, I, I only have one friend who listens to me <laughs> everybody else i'm like hey well i'm gonna do this and yeah no problem bro man you know and like it's so like yeah i don't think so man and i'd rather yeah i'm like okay cool whatever you know it's like they oh, don't right, you know yeah. yeah they just you know if it's free it's not me you know i guess you know when it comes there, to the stock thing something to, i was listening to an audio book the other day uh -huh. and the guy was talking about um this other guy that wanted to bring education to his uh town and he free. set up this uh, school and everything, and, and yeah. he got enough donors that the, it could be for free. But instead, he charged everyone, it was like 3 or $4. And right. he said he found that when he was giving it out for free, no one would sign up. But when he yeah. made him pay a yep. few dollars, all of a sudden, the classrooms were full. And he yeah, was like, it, yeah. there's, there's something psychological like you, about having to pay yep. for it that now they feel invested. Because it means something now because you paid for it. So you have expectation. You have like, there's this, this is human nature, I guess. I don't know. Two yeah. pigs for a goat kind of thing. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there's definitely a component to it because like, I don't even talk to people anymore about stocks or anything. Cause like, I'm like, Hey, well, you know, I'm, I'm doing this thing and hey, it's kind of working, making some money. And, and, uh, Hey, uh, I'll be more than happy to help you out, and but nobody ever really wants to help, so yeah. don't really care at this point. <laughs> yeah. I only got one guy, one guy, you know, with <laughs> Phil. I got Phil, Phil. so yes. yeah, and he's the only guy that listens to me. And I'm like, hey man, if he listens, that's cool, and he makes some little cash, and he's happy, and he's like, hey, what, what do you got going on this week? Well, I'm, I just tell him what we're buying. I, mean, I don't really care, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm not trying to hide the information or anything. I think, I think he got in on Wells Fargo with us. I yeah, mean. he did, yeah. which is again, which is a long haul, right? You know, so but you know, no, yeah, yeah, but he, we used to trade that. Uh, we'd buy yeah, it at forty five and then sell yeah. it at fifty, and it was we, just we, like clockwork. Yeah, and a then few after times. COVID hit, now it's uh, yeah bouncing the, around uh, twenty five. It's not looking good. Uh, but, but still i mean like uh you know if the average price pre-covid was uh you know 45 50 bucks and uh now it's like 25 yeah. or whatever uh the last time it was down this low was in 2011 so almost 10 years ago yeah um you know everything's a low stow on it i i I have two bets. In no, it's a buy one. zone. It's it's yeah. actually, you know, I was actually just looking at it and uh, it's definitely a buy zone, but I'm just going to not sit here and going to tell you, you're going to make, you know, like, uh, you know, 
thousand bucks on it in, in a day or two because that's just probably not going to happen no, but exactly. you know but i think it's a i think it's still a good buy i mean i like it you know what i mean i would I, if you want something in it for like kind of long haul hey it's wells fargo and they're in trouble right now obviously they got all those like opening up all those accounts with like illegal like you know mexicans in uh, northern california or they got they got in trouble and you know and oh, I didn't <laughs> so, hear about this. oh yeah yeah it's a good that's a good one yeah it's a really okay good story. <laughs> oh yeah so they got class action suits they're opening up all these accounts and they're you know and um and they have like i don't know exactly how it went i watched the whole thing on it but anyways they're, they're a little bit but you know it's the bank they always make money that's why they're the tallest uh, buildings in the cities right yeah. <laughs> so they're not, they're not in the they're not in the business to lose so yeah. um they're like oh no like okay we got to pay pay this out i think they just it's, it's part of their accounting process almost at this point right yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it, like it's built-in fraud basically right a lot of companies <laughs> <laughs> they, gotta, they gotta account for their fraud pretty much so you know it's kind of a you know capitalism at its finest right <laughs> uh but yeah so uh, they're but anyways it's just a i think it's, it's still goodbye i really like it we, i have some of it personally i believe you do too and uh but you know i don't really expect anything out of it for probably yeah i don't know maybe next year but yeah you know, probably at least six months to a yeah, year. Yeah, like giving me give me my five percent, leave me alone or whatever it is, you know, we have in there for the dividend. So that's just the way I look at it. But hey, right again, it still pays. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Wonderful. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um yeah, that that's a good one. Um where one that we sold uh, recently, where we sold something and I was kind of wish that we kind of just, we actually, you know what? We started doing something. Um, we started taking the cream off the top. So this is kind of a newer thing. Yeah, um, you, 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 know, you saw this on the internet or something, right? Or... Yeah, I was reading about that. It's kind of a new way of kind of like, I don't know if it's so new, but it's probably just, uh, you know, regurgitated. Um, but yeah, so, you know, kind of getting your winnings and, uh, you know, if it's a good stock, let's say, you know, Wells Fargo was doing, you know, like it, was doing a year ago you know we could kind of go in and out of it you know two three times in a year um you know we now what we're starting to do is just you know take the cream um like you know like 80 percent maybe of your winnings you know and then uh taking that and then obviously staying in the stock you know if it's a good stock hey why not you know um and then, you know, taking your winnings and, and, you know, building up that stockpile. So that's actually been pretty good. And I, st I feel pretty good about staying in the stock if I, if I like the stock, because I think there was one that we just sold and we sold the whole thing, or at least I did. And kind of hindsight 2020, I'm like, yeah, well, I kind of wish I still had that stock, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. um, I'm like, I doubled my money on it and I'm like, I should have just left it. Right. You know? So, but again, it's a learning experience. And, um, but I like kind of, you know, I did that with, uh, I'll come back to my D what I call my DCP TV. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so basically I took uh, like $1,200 of my winnings and I bought my TV. <laughs> so, um, but I left, I left the original amount plus 20% on the stock, you know, well, actually yeah. I did more, more than maybe like 30 or 40% of what, but, uh, but yeah, but I still got a really good share in the DCP and uh, it's still paying me. So there you go. So that was kind of a nice little home run on that. So DCP has been, uh, been, been really good to us. <laughs> oh my God. That one's been amazing. You know, yeah, it, uh, so. that, that was, that was one of our home runs uh, yeah. right after COVID. We snagged it up at like, less than five bucks. Yeah. Like four. And I took some cream off the top at $15, you know, so it's Wait, just like three X instantly. What's that? You took $15 off the top. What do you mean? No, no, no. I, I sold uh, some of my winnings. Uh, oh, when it hit I, thought you I thought you said I only took $15. I'm like, God, I thought I was cheap, but dude, you're taking the cake here, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna go buy yourself a gelato ice yeah. cream or what <laughs> or gelato <laughs> oh my god you know, not sharing it with your girlfriend Jeez. <laughs> so, yeah man yeah all right no 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 i got you i got you yeah yeah absolutely so that's actually been good i mean i kind of like that process and then i'm still kind of in there cool and i'll you know try to make it if i like the stock and you know hey just it's a good stock it's like a, maybe like a duke or something you know like a steady eddie as we call them right and i keep uh, looking back at there. duke right now so uh listen, i know it's uh, looking ju in, starting to look juicy it I, is yes uh, type looking, in d-u-k and the uk is the ticker is it's the a ticker, trading yeah. at 7971 right now but it is like honestly if it comes up on a reverse if it starts to reverse itself coming maybe over this next week 
Um, it, it's, it looks like if we're looking, because we look at it on a weekly, a daily, and a monthly basis. So, yeah. and I'm looking at, it's in kind of a buy zone. For, and it, we do have some reversal in the daily, but the uh, weekly, um, if I'm drawing some like what we call flags, um, it, it's flagging very well. Um, probably do a little bit of a Fibonacci on that. And, but I'm, but it looks really, it looks like a almost perfect setup coming through if it stays on course. So yeah. it's, it, it could even drop a little bit more and find some, what we call back support. Um, and if it finds that back support and gives us some good reverse, um, I believe with it, that's a definite like 100%. It's an expensive stock, but um, I believe that's going to be a, a pretty good, it'd be a good little run for, I would say anywhere from 80 to like $88. So I, mean, I think it's good, like a good, like five to $8 run. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. If we can get it at 80 bucks. Uh, you know, we sell out at like. 85 yeah. to 80. The, the, the perfect situation is it finds some back support at like $78 and it reverses at 78.50, you know, yeah. then we go in. I think that would be like the absolute like perfect uh, thing to go in on. Uh, but yeah, just like I said, we're just kind of waiting and waiting on this one. But again, we, sh we should be putting a bit more money into this because it's obviously like, you know, $80 stock as opposed to like, you know, $10, $20 stock. So yeah, in order to yeah. make some money off it, that eight times, right? Eight times every 80 bucks that we're trying to make off of it. So yeah, 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 that's a good one. Um, I'm trying to think of what else is like in the buy zone right now. But, not a whole lot at least not, not really, it's on not. the watch list um i mean things are kind of starting to set up a little bit um they're kind of on their first like kind of like a first bounce trying to go into another bounce kind of thing and trying to look for the support resistance and i just don't see a lot right now a lot i see a lot of things are kind of like on their way down um but you know that's just what we have on the watch list right now um probably need to find some other stuff though you know yeah yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, six flags looks like it's making a nice run kind of going up. So that, sh that, that, that looks pretty exciting. That's another one that I think we might be taking some cream off the top. If that, that goes into a sell zone, which I think it will hopefully over the next couple of weeks, if it touches up on a sell zone, um, that taking, you know, taking some of those winnings off of that'll be kind of nice, you know? So we're up, I think I'm, I'm personally up about, about three, 400 bucks on that particular stock right now. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, you know, know. maybe, maybe um, I can buy some pour over coffees. I don't know. <laughs> 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 I need some stone work on my, uh, <laughs> I can buy, I can buy some tile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm up, uh, through, I put in 500. I'm up 400. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, like, where are you going to do that now. at? Yeah. But let's just, you know, um, you're not going to do that all the time. I mean, that's just because of the COVID. I mean, you know, when we're kind of back playing the real game, you know, as I say, um, it's more, um, you know, having those, these kind of runs that we've had, I mean, it's kind of like, well, it's, that's going to run out, you know, we're going to be back to like, you know, making like, you know, three, three to nine dollars you know what i mean yeah um as opposed to like you know tripling our money on on things here you know our yeah. only problem seems to be that i just don't have enough money to make more money <laughs> because yeah. you yeah. know what i mean it's like well i wish i would have put in like 10 grand 20 grand on this thing you know so um uh, but we're not there yet and uh but you know it's uh it's all slowly getting there yeah yeah it is a lot of fun though i really like it it's uh, yeah yeah no it's been it's really yeah i mean both of i think both of us enjoy it and it's been you know good it's just kind of we've just kind of made it a integral part of the uh the week you know and you know like my reasons for doing it as i've shared already but um i just i'm a firm believer and just you know that needs to be like kind of a third of uh you know what you got to have your money in to kind of build things and uh or, or at least a really good portion, you know, like stocks, real estate, and, you know, do what the hell you do, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's only so many hours in the day, right? Yep, 
Yeah. Um, Another one. Oh, I'm looking at here. I know you're already in BP and I think you were before COVID. Yeah, I was, you know what? That's one that I had uh, probably should have sold a long time ago, but I think I had like an emotional attachment to it. Okay. (laughs) It's kind of like that old, it's like that old Jeep Grand Cherokee I used to have. (laughs) I just couldn't get rid of it. Um, Yeah. So that was, uh, yeah, that's something I probably should have like sold a long time ago, but you know, it was one of my first stocks I bought. I just, I don't even know. I, you know, I should have sold it a while back. I've had the opportunity to sell it probably at least four or five times, but whatever it pays. And like, you know, it's down for me at the time when I bought it, cause I've had it for so long. So it's, it's, it's pretty down right now for me, but I think it's still a, again, a buy. I don't know if it's a buy zone, but um, it's a long, it's, you know, it's kind of a long hauler as we like to say, right? Yeah. It, I'm looking at it now and it's doing the Charlie Brown and right now it's a 21 21- 38 and um you know i don't see any reason why it wouldn't go up to 20 yeah no i think it's it's still a good buy yeah no absolutely i think it's i think it's a lot of a lot of that stuff you know just just don't have as many people out in the streets right now you can kind of gauge that by the traffic in la yeah (laughs) (laughs) all the 405 oh the parking lot (laughs) yeah (laughs) start putting meters on that thing pretty soon jesus yeah Uh, everybody's yeah. everybody's dissipating from the cities right now it's called white flight man everybody's out <laughs> yep yep <laughs> it's like they, the moving companies can't even keep up from where they call it they're starting to call us commie california now <laughs> it's like uh, these the, the democrats have been in for 10 years this hasn't really worked out too well i guess i don't know <laughs> so uh but yeah um but yeah that's uh yeah, they, I, I'm trying to find out something else maybe that we're where that we're in that maybe you could share some. Exp- oh, um, APTS. We're kind of waiting for that one to try to get rid of that if we can, right? That's kind of like yeah. Let's see. Thing. We got in at that. I think around seven dollars and eighty cents is what my little flag. Yeah, we're here down said. on that, and that's just mm-hmm. something of real estate, which I just kind of not a really a firm believer in at this point, because um, you know, I guess. That's a whole, that's a whole nother show for yourself is right. It's, uh, uh, but yeah, that's, that's looks like it's going to just kind of kick in the can down the road on that whole thing. I don't, I don't really see the, that whole market, you know, um, doing all that great over the next year. I mean, we are getting paid a dividend from it, you know, right, so that, right. that's nice. Uh, but um, yeah, this is one of those too. that, that we bought and it's basically going sideways. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's bouncing up and down a little bit, but not enough to, to where we could sell it. Yeah. And uh but in almost the meantime there. It almost, almost yeah. There. yeah. At, like, Can we sell it? Can we sell it? No. Yeah, it, it got up yeah. to like nine fifty and we're like, yeah. oh, should we sell it? Uh, oh, let's wait till ten bucks and then it just Yeah, we want oh that's like, right. We wanted to try to like no man, we gotta make ten percent off this thing. I don't want to get rid of it. And yeah, that's probably that's probably just like a bad decision. But hey, yeah. you live and learn. Like honestly, if if it gets up to where uh we bought it, it's like just check out of it. <laughs> you know, we already got the dividends, so we got, yeah, got more dividend out of it, like whatever, right? So yeah. um yeah, so that's the other thing too. It's like you you know, sometimes you get a little, I mean, I mean, I, we're fairly non-emotional about it, but you know, you get, you get, you get a little attached to certain things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little tear in the eye. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, we're selling it. <laughs> it's like me with Amber Crombie and Finch. I'm like, yeah, this is I like look at my friend. setup and it's the perfect, I mean, I couldn't oh. have bought it at a better time. You know what it, I mean? Like it went up and then came down and then boom. And that was the lowest it's gotten. Well, Steve, I kind of associate you with, with Amber Crombie and Fitch like, like, <laughs> and those cute little pink shorts that uh, <laughs> yeah I just no no not well, they that's on your own program I don't know about the shorts but <laughs> booty shorts and I don't know that's all your deal right there bro um but what I'm saying no it's just funny because you're all because I didn't want to go in on it because my background is like design and like I'm I'm very used to like a lot of like companies and you know I'm, I'm really scared of like clothing companies Apparel. Yeah, apparel, because it's like, it's so volatile, you know, and I'm like, oh, God, no. So when you came with me to Amber Crombie and Finch, I was like, back, Satan, back, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. <laughs> I fornicated, sorry. <laughs> yeah, those are like, that's like Satan to me, you know? Uh, yeah, but, but anyways, I went in on it, and it ended up being like a good thing. So there you go. I just sold it, actually, and it's actually actually been pretty good so but i do associate you with that (laughs) okay (laughs) not good not bad just just right in the middle (laughs) oh that's funny that's funny but um yeah but uh trying to think of anything else uh that we could um any other golden uh, nuggets 
Um, I would say, uh, oh, value, valuating your stocks. Or oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Looking is, that up. You've, um, you've kind of taken the head on that. So you kind of took some traditional, you know, you kind of taken some traditional routes and kind of combining them with kind of, um, you know, a little technical trading. And, and I kind of believe that's been the working formula. You know, it's like, you know, taking that Benjamin, what's, I don't know, what's that book that everybody reads that I've read? Oh, I forget. Um, Benjamin Graham. Is that what it is? Uh, it was that book you just read. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Intelligent the Investor. The Intelligent Investor, whoever wrote that. Or maybe it was Yeah. That. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Alex, I don't, but anyways, um, yeah. So, you know, just taking a lot of that traditional, you know, good, you know, homegrown, you know, knowledge, you know, old schools, you know, stock. Um, stuff and just combining it, you know, like, Hey, adding the, Hey, what's this company doing and what they're valued at, you know? And so you've kind of taken the head on that, which has been um, actually good, you know, cause it's just like, it, it's really just a, what would you call what another indicator, right? That's what it is. It's just I think so. You know, you, I just go on uh, macrotrends.net and yeah, most of the big companies are in there, you know, right. so if you want to look up Coke or whatever you, you can. And, yeah. Um, I just, I find out, I mean, it's, it's got tabs on here that says assets and liabilities and you click yeah. on assets and you add that up in the plus column and then you click yep. on liabilities and, and you click on that, how much cash they have on hand. And basically what you're doing is you're trying to figure out what this company's net worth is. Right. You know, when you, when you take all their assets and you subtract their liabilities, if this company folded tomorrow, what would that company be worth? Then you take that <laughs> Enron, number. I'm all, I'm all, yeah, Enron, right? <laughs> <laughs> then you take that that amount and you divide it by how how many shares they got and that should give you about what each share should be worth really you know? yeah, now exactly. if you do that number and you find out that each share should be uh, worth two dollars but the thing is trading at two thousand like tesla is it's probably a little overvalued you know <laughs> and, like, yeah just a little bit yeah uh, the last yeah. time i did tesla they were valued at 14 bucks a share but you know like you said they're trading at 2k I'm yeah, like, I just, that's just you know, a huge belief in, I think, yeah. Elon Musk. And yeah, yeah, it's true. I mean, true. He, he could get hit by a car tomorrow. And then what the hell's that going to do to your stock price? That, you know that, what I mean? That's a really good point. You know, you go smoke some weed and the stock goes down. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> he sends out some that. random tweet that yeah. pisses people off. And like, uh, uh, I don't know. That is just a company that I will never touch again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's that's just what I consider just like, you know, play money, you know, you made some money and like, hey, you just want to put your money and you know, you put it in a, you know, you're kind of gambling, right? That's kind of like a growth stock, right? Growth stocks, yeah. you know what I mean? That's uh, the other actually good point, something that I had actually learned, and I don't know the whole weight to it. Um, uh, just because I'm not an accountant, um, but um, it, it was explained to me that growth stocks, uh, not I'm not saying all companies do this, but they have to look good because they're growing, right? You know, and sometimes when you find companies with kind of fidgeting around with the accounting, um, com you know, big companies that because they got to they got to keep getting money so they can grow and grow and grow right so um from their investors so they can f mess with the accounting more there's with the growth stocks as opposed and i don't know so don't quote me please but it's it, this is not i haven't completely researched so this isn't bulletproof so this is just something that um i was actually told and i did a little bit of research on it but i just haven't you know, it's not definitive. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but with dividend stocks, since there's um, a direct, since since you have an accountability to with the dividends to your shareholders, um, that there's less messing around with. Not to say that you, they probably couldn't, but there's not as much uh, room um, to to overvalue things or do any funny accounting um, because they have to pay the dividends. So it's just kind of a nice, nice uh, comforting feel, you know, that, yeah, a little security you know, blanket. Yeah. It's just, you know, just a little bit more, which is kind of nice just to kind of like, yo, um, you know, they, they're not kind of messing. And, and usually the companies that do pay dividends, right. They're, they're generally speaking, there's, there's all like really good companies, you know, generally do 
pay a dividend. Not all of them are good, you know, obviously there's, you know, a lot of Russian oil stocks out there as well. You know, yeah. um, I've been paid on those. Those have worked out really well for me personally, but um, could they do some funny accounting? I'm sure they could. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, do a, you can do a lot in Russia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so, you know, just, you know, just, you know, it's comforting, I, th I think. And it just, you know, it just helps the dividend cost. Cause I've always been conflicted about, you know, because there's a lot of people who don't advocate you know for you know doing any kind of dividend investings and you know so there's people who are like no 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 and then you know the people who just do growth stocks and you know but it's where wherever your comfort level it is you need to decide like what kind of are you super risky guy you know who wants to sit there all day and day trade and put stop losses on stuff and get all pissed off and be bipolar i'm like yo that's not me <laughs> yeah, <know>? yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know i like to just chill out set it up plug it in i'll check it out in a month you know <laughs> you know yeah. check out of it later and i i think what we'll, what we've been doing is called swing trading um so and it's just like kind of a longer it's like a long day trade basically you know for you know weeks or months you know i i just find you know i you're not staring at stuff i've we did that with with what was the other trading that we were doing when we first day, day trading it? Yeah, no, it was the day trading oh, the options. with options, yeah. right? Which is great. That's awesome. But like, that's like a retirement job. You know what I mean? Like, you I gotta, gotta be, you gotta be, gotta be at your computer it. at you know six in the morning when the market opens. Oh and then, yeah, uh, I'm what sorry, we six thirty in the morning in Pacific time when the market opens, and then you gotta be oh, watching it. And yeah, it's, it's Chinese it's, water it's like, torture. Yeah, it's, it, water it's torture. staring at your screen and, and yeah, watching the man. price go up and down of and your blood pressure. Yeah. A couple of stocks and and you're buying and then selling within about 45 minutes. You know? Yeah, how do we, how do we just, say, yeah, yeah. Uh, how do we say in Spanish? Demasiado, demasiado. <laughs> demasiado, yes, uh, too much. <laughs> You're the one with the Garcia last name. You should be doing Yeah, that. well, you know, I got my cousins probably cutting your grass out there with the leaf blower. Yeah, you heard the leaf blower in the background, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell my cousin you call your cousin to tell him to stop? <laughs> yeah, I'll text him on his Apple phone. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. Just tell him it's Daniel Garcia. He's like, which one? Yeah. <laughs> I'll three cousins and a sister named that. I was like, when I uh, when I made you the beans, I'm like, oh, I made you some beans. You're like, that's the most racist fucking thing anyone's ever done for me. I'm like, well, you're <laughs> Mexican. You, you like beans, right? I was you're so all, well, invested with you. Yeah, I, I do. And I'm like, well, there you go. <laughs> What are you yelling at me for? Like, you like, like, him. like if, I, if I was a black man and I showed up to your house and you were just automatically gave me watermelon or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, thanks for the beans, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thanks. The musical fruit. The more you, the more you toot. Yeah, dude, I get it. <laughs> oh, you like watermelon, right? How could you not like watermelon? Yeah, everybody, everybody likes watermelon. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, but then I got you. But hey, I got you on the real deal making those beans bro oh you did yes yeah, yeah. you got to put the hamon in there bro yes yes <laughs> you got to put that bacon yes <laughs> put that piece of bacon in that bean you know change, oh man that was flexi. the secret ingredient i was game missing, changer you know? yeah game changer bean maker but yes. i don't make beans personally but you obviously do <laughs> oh yeah yeah i just made a big old pot like oh you were here yeah. last night you saw the pot I made. yeah i, I should have uh, given I, you some that was fucking yeah. racist of me not to yeah, absolutely, you know, man. I had a Mexican <laughs> I in my house. I could have it to my goddamn protest beans thing. And I didn't even give him. A... Yeah, oh, shit. I yeah. could have some energy for my protesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally kidding. We're not going to go there. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, you've become a very good bean maker. Yeah, I have. I have yeah, I yeah. soak them for over a day. That's and how you get. That's I, how you get all the 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 farts out of it. Is the like the lectins. The lectins. Lectin. Oh, that's yeah, how lectin you get those dangerous. lectins out of there. Yes. And, yes. Uh, soak them for a day and then strain off the water about every four to six hours. Pro tip. Pro yes. Tip. Pro tip. Pro tip. Yeah. Uh, half an onion diced, a whole clove of uh, garlic, like the whole garlic. You yep, know, there's yep. a bunch of cloves in there. Put all those in. Cumin, salt, pepper, and then about half to a pound of bacon. Just yeah, you put that, that bacon is the magical ingredient. Oh, it is. Bacon. Yeah, I mean, it takes the beans from a taste of like a seven to like a nine and a half, just uh, right there. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it's, tipping it's on the, a ten. It's they're tipping on a ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So pro tip. Yeah. Pro tip. Yeah. So you heard it here it makes first. It, yeah, first from uh, from White Boy Steve. <laughs> yes. Making his beans. <laughs> making my beans. 
<laughs> do you refry those by chance? <laughs> I've never done that. No, I probably oh, just. Oh, you know, with like a piece of like, like what do they call Monteca? Monteca. <laughs> the lard. <laughs> the little you know, bit of lard like that, in there. Yeah, that, with that white cube that they sell at the Mexican market. <laughs> Take like a perfectly heart. healthy meal and just fucking yeah, destroy just, it with the. Yeah, just, just <laughs> get that cholesterol up there in about 2.2. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not gonna say it's not gonna taste good, but it's uh, it's yeah, it's next. That's next level bean. So yes. yeah, we don't go there. Yeah, so yeah. I get it. And you do that also the same thing with your potatoes, right? Get all the starches out of it. Yeah, I do. I cook the potatoes first and then put them yeah. in the fridge. And I heard yeah. this on a podcast with Joe Rogan. There was a guy. I, yeah, I, I do that. it. Yeah, I do that myself. Yeah. You do the same thing. It makes yeah, the yeah. potatoes taste uh, better. I think you know they're not like real like. Um, I don't know when you, there's something about when you cook a potato and then cool it off, it chemically mm -hmm. changes from right. It's a, like a yam uh, sticking. A, a, it's like sticking. Yeah, it's like sticking a yam in the oven. It's a yeah, like yeah. You know, it the, yeah, uh, it changes yeah. from a simple carbohydrate to a complex carbohydrate. Exactly. Simple carbohydrates are like sugar and starches, and they make you fat. Yep. Yep. Complex carbohydrates are like broccoli and spinach, and yep. they make you skinny. Well, you can turn that potato into something that's essentially bad for you, into something that's good for you, Absolutely. simply by cooking it, cooling it down, chemically changing it, and then now when you, you eat it, uh, you don't have to eat it cold. You can, you can. Yeah, warm but it up you got to keep it. Don't forget, you got to keep it in the fridge. You know, keep it in the fridge for like what twenty four hours or something. You know, yeah. just just keep yeah. it in there, and then it changes it, and you can eat potatoes, and not be a fat ass. So there yep. you go. There Bob's you go. your uncle. Yeah, another pro tip. Another <laughs> yeah, pro, pro, tip. pro tip potatoes for the day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. So um, I'm sure your your listeners aren't too excited about potatoes. They're probably more interested in making money. So, um, but yeah, anything. Uh, <laughs> so, hey, I, I, I don't know. Hey, so we've got a lot of good uh, nutritional advice on here as well. So <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, what other, um, so anything else you, you want to talk about as far as like stocks or like, as far as yeah, anything that we've done or buy, sell? Let's see, I'm trying to, I kind of wanted to throw um, out a couple that maybe the listeners, uh, if they want to, uh, test the waters here, um, mm -hmm. uh, maybe, uh, maybe British Petroleum. Yeah, uh, well, they're not going to make any money fast on that. I mean, let's no. look at it, though. Um, I mean, the, the uh, BP, uh, let me pull out a trading right now for 2138. Pretty darn low, but looks like it's found some support at the bottom. It's definitely in the buy, but but it's like it just has no – I'm looking at the dailies, weeklies, monthlies, drawing some flags. I mean, it's just <sighs> – I'm not in love with it, Steve. It'd be totally okay. honest. All right. Yeah. I mean, we'll it's kind of like, uh, kind of like, uh, have to be drunk. And then she starts <laughs> <looking pretty. laughs> I'm like, yeah, that six is looking like an eight right now. Like, yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's get there. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, uh, Wells Fargo right now? Now I know we're in for two bets at about 50 cents more than it's trading right now, but Mm -hmm. what, what, uh, what do you think of the graph when you look at the weekly and the daily here on Wells what's Fargo? What's the ticker on that? Is it W? Uh, WFC. Uh, okay, 2469. Um, one, I see a solid. Uh, what I'm looking at right now, it's well below the uh, the the 200 day moving average. So, you know, that, but then again, you know, most things are right now. Um, it's in a buy zone, I feel. Okay. No, not that I feel, I see that. Um, get our feelings out of this. Low right monthly here. still, uh, low weekly very still. Very low, very low, stochastically, very low, low. Uh, it's making a run in a, in a daily, but um, I, it, it's not a picture perfect setup. I mean, I just feel like, you know, it-, it This is one they're gonna buy and they're not gonna touch it for probably six months. Yeah, you just, you know, it's-, it's But uh, you'll get a 4% dividend or whatever it is on it. In the yeah, meantime. I mean, it, they look, it's not a bad thing, but hey, look, it, it could start creeping up to, I mean, it's gotten to 30, 35 in the past, over this last year, you know, when it hit its rock bottom at around 21. Yeah. And it's it's gotten up to about $34. So, you know, that's a good little zone right there. So, you know, hey, you can make some, you can make a few bucks on it, but like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and like guarantee somebody's going to make like, you know, five bucks on uh, per share on this thing you know um it's just gonna take it, it might take a while you know it might go sideways for a while you know yeah. just depending i i'd feel more i'd feel better about putting things in something like you know like a duke energy a utility you know right now than a bank if i wanted to make money faster yeah. um but again it's not a bad i don't think it's it's not a bad position to take if you're just kind of wanting to put something somewhere you know so banks aren't in the market to lose right yeah yeah when's the last when's the last bank you know big bank i should say that you know went bad so it doesn't happen very often um yeah. 
So uh, actually, we're in BBGI right now. Um, that's another one. Um, very low. We, we tried to hit that one because um, we, we it reversed itself, but then it went lower. So, but, you know, that's the chance that you take, um, but it's still in a position to get some back support. So that's still looking really, really good. It's very, very low in the stow right now, stochastic, as we say. Yeah. Um, that's a little bit more of a riskier kind of thing this one's pretty listen. damn volatile yeah I, yeah I, yeah uh, it's we've we've been in and out of this but but again this is actually something that we're comfortable with it dropped but i'm like okay with it like i'm like yo i already, I already know it'll come you know it'll come you know yeah. i just don't know when but this would be something a little bit you know riskier you know but you know if i think for your listeners out there you know just like you know anybody like beginning you know just stick with this steady eddy stuff you know it's like it's easy you know get your money get your bankroll built up and then and then you can start making more educated um you know decisions about your positions and uh you know but getting comfortable i think because like i said they all kind of have their own personalities and you just kind of you kind of start getting used to them they kind of like these little friends of yours right <laughs> yeah they're each one of them's like a little like, child oh, or like a nephew like, or something you know? oh baby B, baby bgi <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> um yeah they just have their own they start you know taking on these little lives you know and you just kind of get used to them like oh yeah yeah i know that one and you know and you can get an idea and and uh it's just it's just the comforting fact and because you know you're putting real money somewhere you know and it's like you need to be comfortable with that you know so yeah. and, and, and that takes time like now i just kind of like yeah i don't even care here you go bbj take my cash you know what yeah. i mean yeah. I know you. I know you'll come back for me. I know you'll pick me up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna leave me. You're not gonna leave me in the hotel room naked. <laughs> <laughs> tied up to the bed with, with tied the up key to the just bed. out of reach. <laughs> yeah, with the key just out of reach with that bite ball. I got gotcha, you, BBGI. <laughs> I know you're coming. <laughs> oh god hopefully nobody walks in while you're gone yeah exactly <laughs> then after 17 hours you're hoping the maid walks in <laughs> yeah yeah please clean yeah. my room damn it <laughs> why did i put the do not disturb on the door <laughs> yeah yeah damn it i knew i should have could i was a contender could have would have should have yeah. oh yeah so um, yeah now they're they're uh yeah these are uh these are yeah, like I said, you know, it depends what your appetite for risk is, right? You know, but yeah. um, but I think it's really good, you know, just, you know, kind of with uh, everything that's been going on and having that, um, you know, a percentage of the bankroll is super important, you know, the $100,000, you know, $5,000, you know, 5%, those should be your positions. Um, that's kind of the calculation, right? 50 grand, you know, like, you know, $2,500 positions, you know? So, I think so. I think 5% of that is, is pretty And that's safe. been really good. And this good. should that's, be that's money that you are not afraid to lose. Just like when you go to the poker table and you sit down at a cash game and you buy in for 500 or a grand or whatever, whatever you buy in for it, you know, it just accept that any one of these companies could go fucking bankrupt and you're gone you know yeah um, yeah well so that's this, why this you is need. extra spending you're not doing this with your with your with your mortgage money you know what i mean right that's right you're like honey um i'm just gonna put our mortgage um payment into this stock this month yeah, yeah don't do that <laughs> don't do yeah, that yeah, at yeah, all just, uh, same, yeah. same bankroll management stuff we do with poker we do with this yeah yeah i know it sounds basic but you know there's a lot of people get excited about things and they'll just do things yeah or know? they'll just fire 21 <laughs> grand on three bets and then they're done yeah take, <laughs> like, it, take, okay. take it from your friend steve <laughs> your friend of steve's that uh yeah just to, to put his whole deal on something yeah just yeah don't do that you know? yeah it, yeah which i should have given him the bankroll speech if, before <laughs> yeah you probably should uh yeah and the disclaimer don't forget you got to give yeah, all you gotta throw in the, the disclaimer, disclaimer. Yeah. yeah because otherwise you know they'll start doing the blame game you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. so never happened to me before but you know i'm just trying to uh you know uh just trying to you know have that not happen <laughs> yeah, yeah. contingency uh, planning as we call that yes. <laughs> uh have a plan and a plan for that plan is what i say <laughs> yes. uh but yeah so i think yeah even with 20 grand i think if you have 20 grand then what is that's uh do a thousand dollars thousand yeah bucks. yeah that's kind of the I, yeah, I about a grand, you know, that's safe. the kind of calculation, you know, 5%, you know, 5% in your positions, you know, but other things go into that too, you know, obviously how much the stock is and, you know, like how much you're actually going to be able to make out of that, you know, so uh, if the stock's under $10, obviously you're going to be making a lot more than if the stock's, you know, $50. So, um, yeah. you know, when it moves. So, yeah, so those are all things to take into consideration, I think. But um, yeah, any other stocks you want to look at or? 
<sighs> yeah, I think I, I, I like what you're saying about Duke. I think we need to watch that one coming next week. So we're we're recording this on Sunday. So the markets are only open Monday through Friday. And it right. seems like they're they're like teachers. They hardly ever work. It seems like every other Friday they have a day off or something. So <laughs> it's Monday about, oh, through market, Friday. Yeah. 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 We, yeah. Well, yeah, that Friday. Well, we, oh, we, and there's another thing. We, I don't we don't like to buy uh or really sell on Fridays. So that's kind of something that that's I was another. Taught. Yeah, Mondays seem to be like, uh, you know, it seems like it progressively gets more action like as the mm -hmm. week progresses. It's so it's right. almost like people that have lost money during the week, they're trying to make it up on <laughs> Friday or something, yeah, you know? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's strange because it's like on Fridays, it's so volatile compared to yeah, the Yeah, yeah, it can be. You don't, you don't know, you don't, but we were taught that and it's something that's been holding very true. And I actually like that. I don't generally trade on Fridays unless I'm going to, and then something, something just volatile and crazy will happen and it'll just spike up. And then I'm like, well, hey, uh, let's just get ready to, pull the trigger on that and just sell it but never buy stuff really on fridays because you know we're, we watch things on a weekly basis and so we're waiting for those um things to reverse at the end of the week um you know we don't usually know till you know till basically monday i guess you know or after things close i guess on friday um then we we can grab another indicator on the, how things are going to be but um but yeah definitely don't buy things on Fridays. <laughs> I think yeah. that's, a pretty, that's a good, that's some good advice. I think I've learned, and I've kind of stuck to that. And not unless it's something that's just like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the case would be trying to make a case for it for buy, but definitely to sell something on Friday, because if something gets volatile and just shoots up, like an example, that BBGI stock, yeah. it shot up from like, you know, like, 250 to like six dollars it was probably on a friday you know when that happened and yeah. uh you know but you can get lucky on that and you know sell some stuff but generally speaking don't really do much on on fridays at all so yeah. um so yeah that cuts down to your uh, your time on things as well so i think people who like look at the friday i i just almost eliminate it for the most part right i mean i do too except like this last friday we sold coke and that was great it went up over three percent just in yeah one that was day a good little example like, it done. made a little run on a friday maybe it shouldn't have done that on friday i don't know but it did right yeah we just kind of got rid of it and we're in there and out of it and, and uh so those are like just good things about fridays the bad about friday is it can go the other way just as just as much as it can go up it can go down right yeah yeah. So that's probably the other piece of advice. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't know any other little nuggets of information, um, you know, that maybe uh, could share, you know, um, international stocks um, as far as, like I said, I think we've kind of went through that, but uh, they do charge fees on those. Um, I noticed like, like Vanguard, Ameritrade and stuff, you know, for um, uh, they do, but it's pretty minimal. It's like, 50 cents or something so um but what they call adrs um those are the international stocks emerging market stuff but um yeah but they charge i guess because they are international i've noticed um but it's a very minimal minimal fee and i think it's a great time now since i think what was it last year when they started the no fee thing that's been that's been really good too oh that's been amazing yeah. yeah, it's like, I don't even know why anybody made such a great um, time now, especially for people that, uh, you know, don't, um, don't you haven't invested before. It's like, dude, you get it so good now. Because before I was in Vanguard, they used to do like $7 a trade and then like, okay. Well, and now, then after 25 trades, now it's 20 bucks a trade or something. Yeah, ridiculous. And I mean, that just, just completely yeah. cut into our profit. You know? Yeah. And then it's like, well, and then if you're just starting out, I think it makes it a little harder as well, because then you're like, okay, well, you know, I started with my, my $500, 600, you know, a thousand bucks or whatever, you know, someone's starting out and, you know, you're, you're getting all beat up because of the fees, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. and then after like, what is it like 10, 15 trades or something, then they charge you $20, you it know? Was 25 and it's like, trades after 25 trades, which yeah. hit in like July. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then it's like, and then we're like, well, I don't want to sell that because I don't want to get hit with that, uh, that, you know what I mean? So it would be yeah. like another thing to kind of deal with, but that's all been eliminated. Um, I don't know what the true reasoning for the whole thing is to bring in more people. I don't know, but well, you know, it, it's been really good not having to even think about that. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. been, that's been, you know, cause like I said, you know, it doesn't really make a difference, you know, on like now it, it wouldn't make a difference. But I think in the beginning when people were really just kind of starting out and doing things, it's like, you know, it's like you're, you're hitting the little guy, you know what I mean? Cause if you, what was it in Vanguard? I think it was, if you have over the Admiral account or whatever it was, then, then all your trades are like, always stay at like 
four or five dollars or something or you get so many free trades or i don't know what it was but it was a lot better and just didn't make it very good for the little guy out there you know what i mean just trying to get things started and get his role going you know so yeah. you're getting all yeah. beat up and then taking your 15 percent if you cash you know you got to pay taxes on that you know what i mean so it's like yep. you know at the end of the day i'm like my hundred bucks just turned into like 20 <laughs> yeah exactly. exactly so i mean like i said now i i even if they were it wouldn't make that much of a difference now because we're making more money right so yeah. but i but in the beginning it hurts you know and it's like so yeah oh it's yeah because we were only we're doing small bets so to, yeah we're to, try, trying to make a, to trying to make a at, charging 20 bucks. and then to sell yeah. it's 40 bucks for every single trade yeah but our, our total profit that we we're going for i think we we're doing like 1k bets at the time so we're, yeah, our goal was to get a hundred. Well, now instead of getting a hundred, you get sixty. Yeah, <laughs> <Just> yeah, like- <laughs> yeah. And then and then we're like, oh, well, maybe we'll just because because you get your your twenty again. I think with Vanguard it started again, and like like I think you called them actually, and you're like, hey, uh, does this like reset in January? And they're like, yeah. And we're like, well, maybe you should wait till January to sell some of these things. You know? What yeah. I mean? <laughs> it was like, yeah. Well, there's so you good have time that to element. sell, but we're gonna get hit on every single one of these. You know? Yeah. Look, it's not a ton of money, but hey, it's still money, and it's like you know, it like. Adds up. Yeah. It adds up if you're if you're trading a quite if you're trading a lot of it, it does it starts to add up you know and it's there a TV. is um, it's a TV at the end of the year you know <laughs> there's uh, another thing I've noticed too is if there's not a whole lot of volume on some of these stocks right yeah um, they uh, there was one that I was going to buy it was around mm-hmm. five bucks a stock and then when I typed you couldn't do in, it um, you know I typed in uh, I don't remember how many shares but uh, yeah like two hundred shares or something and I was like. Yeah. Well, Sorry. why is it charging me two thousand instead of a thousand? And then that's when I realized mm-hmm. there's not much volume with this, so Vanguard mm-hmm. must have to charge a fee for it so that they can make anything. And right. it drove the price from five dollars up to ten. So luckily, yeah. I didn't hit enter, yeah. or I would have been in on a five dollar stock, but paying ten bucks for each one. Oh, that's and, fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Great deal, right? Yeah, and so yeah, I was a- like, what the fuck? Yeah. And uh, so I uh, I called them on it, and they're like, "Yeah, this is a, a obscure stock, you know. Here, so if if you want to buy this one, we got to charge you uh, basically double of what it what it costs." And I'm like, "Oh, well, fuck that!" What, you're like you're like, and what's the point of me even buying it? Yeah, like yeah. who the hell would buy this? This is retarded. Yeah. Well, yeah, because so, the volume is not pushing enough volume. So yeah, yeah, that's something to take into consideration as well. With like, especially when you're searching around for for stuff you know you want to see how much volume you know they're pushing pushing around as well so yeah um, that and can really pay attention me. to those um uh fees you know just like in the example i gave they could uh, uh yeah yeah it's but not I mean, like there's going to be a big red flag that comes up and says hey wait this is a terrible deal <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 make so, sure I that mean, when you you click it in you're getting it for the price that it's actually trading at right then um, yeah and i think that they've done a really good job with all like the online stuff as far as like plugging everything in and, and kind of like being able to like you know get through it it's pretty seamless the process once you do it a few times and you get comfortable with it you know yeah. it's been yeah it's been uh it's been you know it's pretty i mean each one of the platforms works a little td ameritrade or fidelity vanguard i mean they all work a little bit different but um but i found that they're uh, on their support like you can just call them and they're really good about it and they're very helpful and i've been pretty impressed with um a few of the uh brokerage firms or you know that uh that when you call like you know the every all the questions you know they're just really good about it. a lot better than i would think i guess originally <laughs> yeah so yeah um so that's been really good actually um i've called had to call vanguard uh, on numerous occasions and uh, they've always walked me through things or i said you know i didn't understand something and they're like no and they explained it so um but yeah they, they just have a good i think a lot of the things now they just have a they have a lot of good support you know for people trying to start out you know yeah yeah, yeah so that's I do too. I do too. yeah so uh cool well, thank you, uh, thank you, Danny. This was uh, this was fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks for having me, and uh, I can take myself out to a coffee now with the money you bribed me with. So I appreciate right on. it. Cool. <laughs> so uh, I even got dressed for this thing, put some lipstick on the pig, and uh, I was good to go this morning. So thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, you look you look just wonderful. Yeah, I look all purdy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Squeal like a pig, boy. <laughs> Uh, okay so yeah don't want to be too candid out there so yeah we're all good um yeah thanks for having me see appreciate it uh thank you for all of you listeners hopefully didn't babble on uh 
too crazy and weird, learned a few things and uh, you know, that's all we can hope for. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. It was good. Thank you, Danny. And thank you for tuning in. Here is your weekly motivational speech. You're broke. Welcome to the club. You're scared. Welcome to the club. You're not sure. Welcome to the club. There is nothing. I mean, literally nothing you are facing right now that the great ones didn't face before. It ain't just you dealing with it. Everybody got to deal with insecurities. Everybody got to deal with fear. And you might have to say, I'm going to get through this over and over and over until you believe it. The great ones fight through. Everyone has challenges and setbacks. That's a part of the journey. Can you please do you a favor and get out of your head? You're still wishing and you're still hoping for it. You're still planning. Like you've been planning this for five years. Get out of your own head. Because once you taste that success, I want you to keep eating. Once you get success on your lips, I want you to keep drinking. Once you understand the keys of success, it's not the end, it is only the beginning. Because you understand, once you get that breakthrough, you finally understand what you're capable of. Purpose is bigger than the pain, and the promise is bigger than the process. And I know it's hard right now, and I know you feel like quitting, but you gotta understand there is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. Stop lying to yourself and telling yourself that you have time. See, the greatest lie that you have believed far too long is that you have time. You have time that there is a tomorrow that, that you can drag your feet and you can, you can crawl. Sometimes you gotta run. You can't crawl towards some dreams. You can't walk towards some dreams. Some dreams you gotta run towards. You gotta run, baby. Run, 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 run after it. Run like there's no tomorrow. Run like you know you deserve it. Run like you know that there is nobody else that can attain it. Run after it.